We have an engine that's less infamous and more just plain annoying, the Skoda 1.2 HTP. This three-cylinder engine found in various Skoda Fabia, Roomster, and CityGo models was designed to be cheap and cheerful. And it was cheerful for about five minutes. Now, this engine wasn't exactly a powerhouse. With its three cylinders and modest displacement, it produced around 60 to 70 horsepower, depending on the version. It was designed for economy, not speed. But what it lacked in power, it made up for in noise. This little engine sounded like a lawnmower on steroids, especially when pushed hard. It wasn't exactly a refined driving experience. BMW N47 2.0D This diesel engine, found in a wide range of BMW models from the 1 Series to the 5 Series, was initially praised for its performance and fuel efficiency, but there was a dark side lurking beneath the surface. The M47 engine now I'm just going to go over the most common problems on this car and show you what can actually go wrong on this car. So as you know, this is a diesel engine. The N47 was a technological marvel featuring common rail direct injection, turbocharging, and other advanced technologies. It delivered impressive power and torque while still achieving respectable fuel economy. But its Achilles heel was its timing chain, unlike a timing belt. I'm sure if you're aware of the N47 engine, you're aware of the timing chain problems which is located at the front of the engine and is relatively easy to access. The N47's timing chain was located at the back of the engine, nestled against the firewall. This made it incredibly difficult and expensive to access. Sticking with diesels, at number 16, we have another Volkswagen entry, the 2PD TDI. This engine, produced from 99 to 2008, was found in countless Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, and Skoda models. It was known for its strong low-end torque and decent fuel economy. The 2.0 PDT DI was a workhorse engine designed to be durable and efficient. It featured a Poppy Dews fuel injection system, which used a camshaft-driven pump to deliver fuel directly to each cylinder at extremely high pressure. This resulted in good fuel economy and strong low-end torque, making it ideal for towing and hauling. The injectors themselves were prone to failure, especially in early versions of the engine. These failures could lead to poor fuel atomization, reduced performance, and increased emissions. The high-pressure fuel pump, which was responsible for generating the immense pressure required by the injectors, was also a weak point. So far, we've seen engines with camshaft problems, oil consumption issues, and timing chain woes. But what if your engine could break in half? Land Rover 2.7 TDV6, we have an engine that's as rugged as the vehicles it powered, or so you'd think. This diesel engine, found in various Land Rover Discovery and Range Rover Sport models, was designed to tackle tough terrain. But it had a weakness for something far less challenging, its crankshaft. This 2.7 liter V6 turbo diesel was jointly developed by Ford and Peugeot Citroën intended to provide a modern and powerful heart for Land Rover's capable off-roaders. It boasted decent power and torque figures, making it suitable for towing and hauling. However, it developed a rather nasty reputation for crankshaft failure. The crankshaft is the backbone of the engine, converting the linear motion of the pistons into rotational force that ultimately drives the wheels. The Saab 2.0 and 2.3 Turbo These engines found in various Saab 900, 93, and 9.5 models were known for their smooth power delivery and impressive tuning potential, but they were also notoriously demanding. These turbocharged engines were at the heart of Saab's performance heritage. They were renowned for their strong mid-range torque and their ability to be tuned to produce significant power. One of the biggest issues with these engines was their propensity for sludge buildup. Sludge is a thick, tar-like substance that can form in the engine when oil breaks down and combines with contaminants. In the Saab turbo engines, sludge buildup was particularly problematic because it could block oil passages, starving the engine of lubrication and leading to premature wear. High-maintenance engines are one thing, but what if your engine was prone to a whole laundry list of problems, from injector failures to overheating? Renault 2.2 DCI this engine, found in various Renault, Laguna, Espis, and Vell Satis models, was another example of good intentions gone wrong. This 2.2-liter four-cylinder diesel engine was designed to offer a blend of performance and economy. 
It featured common rail direct injection, turbocharging, and other advanced technologies. One of the most common issues with the 2.2 DCI was injector failure. The injectors, which are responsible for delivering fuel to the cylinders, were prone to leaking or becoming clogged, leading to poor fuel atomization, reduced performance, and increased emissions. The turbocharger, which forces more air into the engine for increased power, was also a weak point. Turbochargers on the 2.2 DCY were known to fail prematurely, often due to oil starvation or excessive wear. We have an engine that was small in size, but big on problems. The Fiat 1.3 Multi-Jet First Generation This diesel engine, found in countless Fiat, Alfa Romeo, and Lancia models was designed to be economical and environmentally friendly, but it had a few gremlins lurking under the hood. This little 1.3 liter diesel engine was a popular choice in small cars and superminus across Europe. It was praised for its fuel efficiency and low emissions, making it seem like the perfect engine for city driving and eco-conscious motorists. However, the first generation of this engine, produced from around 2003 to 2009, was plagued by several issues. One of the most common problems with the early 1.3 multi-jet was exhaust gas recirculation valve failure. The exhaust gas recirculation valve is designed to reduce emissions by recirculating a portion of the exhaust gases back into the intake manifold. Clogged filters and turbo failures are bad enough, but what if your engine had a thirst for oil that rivaled its thirst for diesel? We have an engine that was supposed to be a smooth operator, but ended up being anything but. It's the Opel 2.216 valve Ecotec. This petrol engine, found in various Opel Vectra, Signum, and Zafira models, was designed to offer a balance of performance and economy. This 2.2-liter four-cylinder engine was a mainstay in Opel's lineup during the early 2000s. It was designed to be a refined and efficient power plant, offering decent performance and respectable fuel economy. However, it developed a rather notorious reputation for excessive oil consumption. This excessive oil consumption meant that owners had to constantly top up their engine oil, sometimes as frequently as every few hundred miles. Neglecting to keep the oil topped up could lead to serious engine damage, including increased friction and wear on engine components. An engine that's become synonymous with unreliability, the Rover K series. This engine found in various Rover, MG, and Lotus models was initially praised for its lightweight design and peppy performance. The K-Series was a range of four-cylinder petrol engines that powered many Rover, MG, and Lotus models from the late 1980s to the mid-2000s. It was designed to be lightweight and efficient, offering a good balance of performance and fuel economy. However, it was plagued by a notorious design flaw that led to countless headaches for owners, its fragile head gasket. The head gasket is a critical component that seals the gap between the cylinder head and the engine block, preventing coolant and oil from mixing. In the K-Series engine, the head gasket was prone to premature failure, often due to a combination of factors, including overheating, poor coolant circulation, and inadequate clamping force. This next engine, Co, was the result of a collaboration between two automotive giants. You'd think that would guarantee success. Well, think again. The result of a collaboration between two automotive giants, BMW and PSA Peugeot Citroën. The 1.6 Prince engine was designed to be a modern efficient power plant, and it found its way into a wide range of mini Peugeot and Citroën models. But it turned out to be a bit of a Frankenstein's monster. Also in small BMWs and minis until February 2016, this engine is well known for being extremely unreliable. This 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine was jointly developed by BMW and PSA Peugeot Citroën intended to power a variety of small cars and compact sport utility vehicles. It was a technologically advanced engine featuring direct fuel injection, variable valve timing, and turbocharging in some versions. One of the most common issues with the 1.6 Prince engine was timing chain problems. Another common problem was excessive oil consumption. High pressure fuel pump problems. They have turbocharger problems. The intakes get carboned up because they are direct injected and not port injected. The 1.6 Prince engine was known to burn oil at an alarming rate, often requiring frequent top ups between oil changes. This was due to a combination of factors, including worn piston rings and valve stem seals. 
Then we have another BMW engine, and this one is a real heartbreaker. It's the N63 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. This engine found in various high performance BMW models like the 5 series, 6 series, and X5 was designed to deliver exhilarating performance. This is a BMW N63. It is a twin turbo direct injected hot V V8. This can be found in 5 series, 7 series, X5, X6. This engine was a beast, producing well over 500 horsepower and mountains of torque. It was the heart of some of BMW's most exciting vehicles, giving them the power to rival supercars. But this performance came at a cost. The N63 was a complex engine with intricate systems and high tolerances, and it proved to be less than reliable. One of the biggest issues with the N63 was its high-pressure fuel system. To achieve its impressive power output, the engine relied on a sophisticated direct injection system that delivered fuel to the cylinders at extremely high pressure. However, the components of this system, including the high-pressure fuel pumps and fuel injectors, were prone to failure. Built up heat from those turbochargers, from that exhaust manifold, and that's really one of the things that causes a lot of the issues with the N63. Expensive repairs and complex issues are par for the course with high-performance engines. But what if a seemingly simple engine was plagued by a variety of problems? Next, we have an engine that was as charismatic as the cars it powered. The Alfa Romeo 2.0 Twin Spark 16 V. This engine found in various Alfa Romeo 156, 147, and GT models was known for its distinctive sound and lively performance. But it also had a temperamental side. This 2.0 liter four-cylinder engine was a classic Alfa Romeo design known for its twin spark ignition system that used two spark plugs per cylinder for improved combustion efficiency. The size of the cylinders is almost the same dimension as the travel of the pistons up and down in the cylinder. It produced a distinctive exhaust note that was music to the ears of Alfa Romeo enthusiasts. However, this engine was not without its flaws. The 2.0 Twin Spark was also for its oil consumption issues. This was due to a combination of factors, including worn piston rings and valve stem seals. The engine's high operating temperatures and spirited driving style often exacerbated this problem. Furthermore, we have another Volkswagen engine that made its way onto our list, the 1.2 TSI. This small but mighty engine, found in various Volkswagen Polo, Golf, and Jetta models, was designed to offer a balance of performance and fuel economy, but it had a few skeletons in its closet. A 1.4 TFSI engine, that's something that typically doesn't affect a good 1.4 TSI or TFSI engine. This 1.2 liter four-cylinder engine was part of Volkswagen's TSI family of turbocharged direct injection engines. It was designed to be a small efficient engine that could deliver peppy performance while still achieving good fuel economy. One of the most serious issues with the 1.2 TSI was timing chain problems. The timing chain, which is responsible for synchronizing the crankshaft and camshafts, was prone to stretching or even snapping, especially in early versions of the engine. This could lead to catastrophic engine damage requiring a costly rebuild or replacement. All the different ways the head gasket can sort of be blown, what the symptoms are, and how to determine if it's actually bad or not. Coming in next, this engine is another example of Italian engineering with a fragile heart. Next we have another Alfa Romeo engine that was both a joy and a pain to own, the 2.5 V6. This engine found in the Alfa Romeo 156 and GTV was a masterpiece of Italian engineering, producing a glorious sound and delivering impressive performance. This 2.5 liter V6 engine was a true gem. Known for its smooth power delivery, responsive throttle, and intoxicating exhaust note, it was a perfect match for the sporty Alfa Romeo, 156, and GTV, giving them the performance to match their stylish looks. However, this engine was not without its quirks. One of the most common problems with the 2.5 V6 was camshaft variator failure. The variations are responsible for adjusting the timing of the camshafts and optimizing engine performance and efficiency. However, the variations on this engine were prone to premature wear, leading to rattling noises, rough running, and reduced performance. Then we have a BMW engine that was once a staple of the brand's lineup. The 2.0 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder. 
This engine, found in countless BMW 3 Series, 5 Series, and Z3 models, was known for its smooth power delivery and refined character. This engine, often designated as the M52 and later the M54, was a classic BMW inline 4. It was known for its smooth operation and eager response. It provided adequate power for the cars it was in, offering a balance of performance and efficiency. So you're looking at a BMW with the N20 engine, and you want to know how reliable it actually is. One of the most common issues with this BMW 2.0 engine was problems with the Vano system. Vano's, which stands for Variable Camshaft Timing, is BMW's system for adjusting the timing of the camshafts to optimize engine performance and efficiency. However, the variable camshaft timing system on these engines was prone to problems, particularly with the solenoids that control the oil flow to the variable camshaft timing actuators. Oil leaks and coolant leaks are certainly annoying. But what if your diesel engine was prone to clogging up faster than a rush hour freeway? Next we have another diesel engine that caused its fair share of headaches, the PSA 1.6 HDI. This engine, found in numerous Peugeot and Citroën models, was designed to be economical and environmentally friendly. This 1.6-liter four-cylinder diesel engine was widely used in Peugeot and Citroën models during the mid-2000s. However, it was plagued by several problems that tarnished its reputation. One of the most common problems with the 1.6 HDI was particulate filter issues. The particulate filter is designed to trap soot and other harmful particles from the exhaust gases, reducing emissions. However, the particulate filter on this engine was prone to becoming clogged, especially in vehicles that were mainly used for short journeys or city driving. A clogged particulate filter could lead to reduced performance, increased fuel consumption, and even engine damage. Further, we have an engine that's become synonymous with unreliability, the Renault 1.5 DCI. This engine, found in countless Renault, Nissan, and Dacia models, was designed to be economical and efficient. This 1.5-liter four-cylinder diesel engine was ubiquitous in small cars and compact SUVs across Europe. It was praised for its fuel efficiency and low emissions. However, it was plagued by several serious problems that made it one of the most unreliable engines ever produced. It's a four-cylinder engine, one and a half liters. One of the most infamous issues with the 1.5 DCI was its tendency to throw connecting rods. In the 1.5 DCI, the connecting rods were prone to failure, often due to poor lubrication or excessive stress. When a connecting rod failed, it could break free and puncture the engine block, causing catastrophic damage. Here we have the engine that takes the crown for the worst engine ever, the Volkswagen 1.4-1.6 FSI. These engines found in various Volkswagen Golf, Jetta, and Turan models were designed to be efficient and environmentally friendly. But they turned out to be a nightmare for owners. These engines, part of Volkswagen's fuel stratified injection family, were designed to be a more efficient alternative to conventional fuel injection engines. They used a layered combustion process that was supposed to improve fuel economy and reduce emissions. However, these engines were plagued by a multitude of problems that made them one of the most unreliable engines ever produced. One of the biggest issues with the 1.4 and 1.6 FSI engines was carbon buildup on the valves. This was a common problem in direct injection engines, as the fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber, bypassing the intake valves. This meant that the valves were not cleaned by the fuel spray, allowing carbon deposits to accumulate over time. But wait a minute, you didn't smash the bell and press the like button. Blast, 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 blast.